the way that the timing played out. So Wait, I might repeat that again. Almost a month quarantine in a travel trailer in the middle of nowhere. No and internet. we all survived. Hi guys. So I wanted to give you an update of what we've been up to last couple of days. Yesterday, the power company came out and as you can see, they did a great job. They trenched from the pole all the way down and they set our new box for power and connected it to the rack. So we now have power, which is awesome. Our electrician, uh, our friend came out and he actually installed a 30 amp and 50 amp and then a regular outlet for us right there. And so what that means is we will be able to, um, once we get the water done, which that's an ongoing project, we've been putting off trenching across the driveway as long as we can and I think we're kind of at that point we're trying to finish up the electricity uh, running all of the wiring inside of the cabin before we move on to the next project which will probably be plumbing and running pecs at that point but we could go ahead and run the water line which we already have it I don't know if you can see without me walking down there, but there actually right here is a nice little pile of um, main water line that'll go from the from the water main that the county sat for or set for us, uh, the rural water district. They they already installed that. We already have water here. We have water service. We just need to run that plumbing. And we've got most of the trenching done. As you can see, it ends right there. And we need it to go to there. So, and then across the driveway. And then we can actually lay the pipe in the trench and get, get water over here. The propane company should be here this week to set our propane tank our 500 gallon tank and I think what we're gonna do is have it set right over here by the rack for the electricity and that way we can pour a slab around that and um, at some point enclose it on three sides we want to build like a little wall around it so you're not just looking at the infrastructure type stuff um, but still have it accessible from the driveway side so that it's easy for the propane company to refill our tank. Um, so that's really exciting. That's fun. Once we have those things done, which I know it sounds, sounds simple, but it's probably going to take us a little while. But once we have those done, we'll be able to move the RV over here. And then we will be that much closer for working over here every day. And now that we have power to the box, we will be able to run power cords to the cabin, um, extension cords, and work at night. Right now, sunset is about 5.30. I know we're gaining a little bit every day, but it's between 5.30 and 5.40 every day. And when you have two people who work full-time jobs, we can't get home and get anything done before we have no light. And you can only do so much on battery powered lights. So we, we are very excited about that. Very, very excited. Johnny. There's Jess. <laughs> She's thrilled. She brought the marker back for us so that we can label some, some power cords in here. Oh, Dottie brought it back. Say hi, honey. She wouldn't come back on her own. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. Well, you can go back over. Thank you. You want to go inside, Dottie? You want to go inside? Huh? Okay. So we have uh, one of the very first one of the very first projects that we got done. Oh, you want to take her? Those dogs love being out here. So do the kids, but maybe more so the dogs. One of the very first things that we got done was the steps for getting in uh, into the cabin. 
and we're pretty happy with how they turned out. We didn't want the risers sitting on just plain dirt and we knew it would rot faster. So we poured a little bit of concrete. Not the greatest job, but we were we were mixing it in um, in a big blue mineral tub. Um, I have some time lapse of that. Then we set the pavers on top and set the, the risers and the steps. And one of our main goals was to get this top step here um, where it was flush with the edge of the porch. And I think we did an okay job. Um, it's pretty, pretty darn flush. So that gives us just a little bit um, extra room before you come off the front of the porch and before you start heading down the steps. So I'm gonna, I still have my Christmas wreath up. <laughs> um, I'm gonna take you in and show you what we've been doing on electrical. So we have almost all of the outlets run. That's, uh, it's taken us longer than we thought it would. It actually ends up being a lot more wire than you think it's going to be. You think, oh, this is a tiny little cabin, thousand square feet. We didn't think we would even use the whole roll of 12-2 uh, Romax, and we're going to use the whole roll. And then some. Mike is up here, still working away. Hey. <laughs> um, he is running, what are you running now, babe? Uh, right now I'm running the switch for Jess's room. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've got Adler's room, his switch done. I've got our switch done. I'm gonna skip over to Jess's room because we're gonna have four four runs over to the bathroom. So we're gonna just knock knock out this while I had enough here. I don't want to run out mid mid run. Oh, for the those. bathroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have had our electrician out said we were doing a great job and <laughs> professional guidance electrical gas plumbing I'm okay with I, I'm not you know something goes wrong with plumbing you have a leak but if something goes wrong with electrical or gas except for the drain because we you gotta make sure it drains right otherwise you will constantly have problems yeah but electrical and gas, you, you go wrong there and you have a possibly fatal situation. So um, definitely getting guidance on all of those. And um, he came out, said we're doing a really great job. And well, well he said he wouldn't fire us. Yeah, wouldn't fire. <laughs> I don't know what his, uh, pram his parameters are. Right. But 
so far we we haven't done an awful job. So today we are hoping, hoping. Do you think we'll have it done today? Hmm? Do you think we'll have it done today? Wiring? It's possible. Yeah? Yeah. It's gonna be good to have to be a good day. Um depends on whether we have to go to Lowe's or not. Oh we're gonna have to go to Lowe's. Then probably not. <laughs> so you know how those trips go. They never go you never just in and out. No. No. Uh -oh. <laughs> He's using Adler's little gadget that he built. Um, I have I have video of that, and I will um, I will have to put it in a fast forward because it's about an hour of him uh, building this little contraption. And by contraption, it's it's a box. But let me show you. Uh oh, and it's derailed. So when you're running Romex, if you've ever done that before, you know that you you pull on the wire and it this whole spool likes to run away from you it either runs across the floor or if you have it up on end it kind of does this really awful um i don't know galloping in place and then it walks away from you so he saw that problem and decided he wanted to fix it so he built this box and he intentionally we had some scrap wood from pallets and he took that and he intentionally left this gap in these two boards so that it would cradle the roll and now whenever one person pulls on it one person can do this on their own they can pull on it and it unrolls and stays in place whereas before you really kind of needed two people to make it work so we thought that was pretty awesome he got a new set of tools for christmas from his grandpa and he wanted to use those and i thought he did a really really great job he needed very little guidance and just kind of saw a problem and decided to fix it so he's meant to be a farm kid all right tell me what you did So this is the box that you built, mm -hmm. and what what is it for? It's for this uh, it, because when I have like this and stuff, it's really hard to pull it. Mm -hmm. Even whenever it's on the ground like this. What does it want to do whenever it's on the ground like that? It just wants to roll. Mm -hmm. But whenever it's like this and that box. Good job. Thank you. Yeah. That's going to save us a lot of headache. What? For having to fight with it all the time. Oh. 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 Yeah. Way to go. It works and my back hurts. <laughs> it's a good day if your back hurts? Yeah. Dad? Yes. Could you pop my back once you're done? <laughs> so that's kind of where we are, really. We just need to finish running the... We like to finish it. <laughs> we need to finish running the, um, the switches. We're going to have to get some 12-3. And that'll run between the, the three-way switches. And then, and then like in the bathroom to the vent and the heater and uh -huh. that kind of stuff. And then what what are we gonna need for the uh, the appliances in the kitchen? What will we need there? Uh, just regular one ten since we're using a gas stove. We will have to run um, a uh, two twenty outlet for the dryer. Are we doing electric dryer or gas? Well, I'd say we, we're better off to go ahead and run the wire while it's open. Uh -huh. And then we have the option of electric or gas whenever, you know, we're to that point. And we could do either one. Okay. We have options. So, that 
that should finish that up for the electrical. We do still need to run a line over here. Did we decide we can go straight out of the switch on this? We have to run to this switch up here, which is going to be the, the three-way switch. Um, we need to actually change this out for a three because we're going to have the over... Unless we just wire the fan hot all the time like we've had in the past where you control it with a pull chain and then your light is controlled by the switch and then the port's light by the other switch. Okay. So, I mean, there's two ways to do it. You can have it where you've got a switch for your fan and a switch for your light or you just run the fan hot all the time and control it with the pull switch. Hmm. To be since determined. I, since I never like the fans to go off. I know. You know which way I, I go. Always, always has the fan on. I can be freezing in sweats under an extra quilt on the bed and he has the fan pointed at him. But to be fair, should be in sweats and a hoodie and a blanket like 75 degrees. So we have a 20 degree temperature differential between us. <laughs> So, at least yes. <laughs> guilty. I mean, it, it is, it is what it is. So, um, anyway, so yeah, we'll have, have to, <laughs> I can only put on so many before I can't move. <laughs> so anyway, we'll need to run this still and there will be a porch light so we will need to drill through the wall over here but we don't want to do that and run that power um that romex out there until we have the light because we want to make sure that everything stays dry we don't want just an open hole in the wall no. so prefer not to. anyway we're getting a lot closer uh jess came through and did a really great job every um every little section except for the little tiny ones but she came in and and labeled every wire so um in the future when we undoubtedly knock a hole in the wall we will know or we need to change something or fix something we will know exactly what line goes to to what mm -hmm. <laughs> so again it's it's surprising how much goes into such a small space um, you know, we, we drilled the holes and th there's a lot of wire going through mm -hmm. each individual hole. Right. We're getting and, close to a thousand feet. Yeah. Um, it really does. It, it takes more than you think that it's going to. So that's, that's kind of where we are. All these materials are cheap, right? <laughs> Almost free. Yeah. Practically free. Mm -hmm. um so yeah that's where we are we're just plugging along <coughs> but it it feels like things we'll are moving to work the right at night direction. i know it's really we exciting power. very good power out there yeah i wish i have to get power that's in another thing that we yeah. need to get at lowe's is long enough extension cords. of course i measured it this morning we are 148 feet to the front step to to the outlet so okay 200 feet of of cord will get us some movement in here Working after 5.30. Yay. <laughs> now, to be fair, we have not tested the outlet. No. We think it's hot. We think it works. We don't know. So, we will find out. We will. I bet we find out today, too. Mm hmm Yep. So, it's actually been pretty comfortable in here. We have a couple of heaters, propane heaters. And, and don't worry, we're not running them long enough to, to have carbon monoxide be an issue. We just run them long enough to kind of knock the chill down. It was 20 something degrees when we woke up this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, there was ice on the pond and so it was, it was pretty cold, but you don't have to run them very long. Um, we have one over there, which I know is not made for indoor use. So again, we're not using that one. We don't use very long at all. It's just the, the faster of the two. And then we have this guy that is actually made for indoor use. And we will be, 
um, attaching that to the wall whenever we're done and that will become a backup heat source should we lose power and aren't able to use our um, central heat and air in the future. So um, anyway, once the, once the sun gets out and gets on this south wall, it's actually, it's a dark color and it absorbs a lot of the heat and you can feel it as you get over there. It actually gets really warm on that side. It radiates that heat. Yeah. The reason we're thinking, you know, we could be without power is we are in a bit of a rural area and... A bit? Yeah. <laughs> Our nearest neighbor is a mile away. Yes. Um, but, you know, if the power goes out here, we're not high on the priority list to get, no. to get back up and going. So it could be a week, two weeks... Yeah, without power. And we've we've definitely had ice storms where rural already. areas are are weeks without power, mm -hmm. and um, I've I've lived through it being being in a rural area before during an ice <clears throat> storm, and we've already had one this winter mm -hmm. that knocked out power in October, which was not even winter; <laughs> it was fall. It was the earliest recorded uh, ice storm warning by the National Weather Service, so um, it was insane. We had just barely moved into the rv had mm -hmm. no power it's just been yeah. it's been crazy it was a good experience <laughs> but keeping that in mind we'll have a backup heat source but we will have a um a generator mm -hmm. that will back up the power to keep the necessities you know uh refrigerator freezers you know mm -hmm. wi-fi that kind of stuff going right so well, I guess that's if you ask the, the teenagers and the kids, they, they think it's a necessity. Well, food is definitely a necessity. Yes, I'm talking about the Wi-Fi. The, the Wi-Fi. Not a necessity. Yeah. Well, it was during virtual schooling. This has just been a year. It's just been yeah. an insane year. You know, we moved to an RV in the middle of nowhere, and we did not have, um, did not have internet set up. And we we went through the ice storm, and then... Um, then we had to quarantine because, yay, I, yeah, that was me. Um, I got it, then and Adler the got it, mm -hmm. and then they had to quarantine almost a month because of just the way that the timing played out. So, Wait, I might repeat that again. Almost a month quarantine in a travel trailer in the middle of nowhere, no and internet. And we all survived. Now, we got internet back about halfway through your quarantine because I went back to work like the day before we got internet. Mm -hmm. um, but the kids, in the middle of all that, of us being quarantined, it was actually a weekend of us being quarantined. They had to go virtual schooling for school because mm -hmm. our numbers went too high in this county. So... They went to virtual, and for the first bit of of being in quarantine, they didn't have internet, and that was a beast. We were trying to use hotspots on phone, and anyway, it's, it's very just, difficult to work that way. It's been a comedy of errors. Mm -hmm. I, I think we need to write a book, or make a movie. You know, I know. Maybe we could have Chevy Chase or something. <laughs> That would actually be pretty accurate. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, it's no work, but we all still like each other, I think, most mm -hmm. days. Yep. And we're, we're getting closer to done. Every minute that we're actually doing something, we're getting closer to yes. done. Um, Speaking of which. Right now, get we're not getting work. closer to done. But we will be soon, and we will be moving in here. Oh my gosh, Jess has gone around with the marker. And, I don't know, it's hard to see that little smiley face. They're She's putting smiley face. faces everywhere. everywhere. Um, even, <laughs> even on the studs, she's written smiley faces. Let's see, there's one. So, she's making the best of her job of going around and labeling everything. So we're gonna get back to work. Mm -hmm.